Now let's take a close look at Climax locomotive history. Climax locomotives were built from 1888 to 1928 by the Climax Manufacturing Company of Cory, Pennsylvania. The first Climax locomotive, built in March 1888, was sold to Imel, Powers and Shank for lumbering in the Cory area. The first Climax weighed just 10 tons in working order and was the precursor for hundreds of Class A type locomotives which were manufactured right up to the closing of the company in 1928. The first Climax Class A's were crude and did not resemble a conventional locomotive in any way. The Class A's simple design made it inexpensive to buy and operate and easy to maintain. Its most outstanding feature was a two-speed gear arrangement connecting the engine to the driveline shaft. The engineer could shift gears at will from the cab. The lower speed was used to start heavy trains on steep grades. In 1893, a new Class B locomotive was designed which featured a horizontal boiler with cylinders positioned alongside the boiler at an elevation of approximately 40 degrees. The first locomotive built to this design weighed 25 tons. The new Class B design was an instant success and quickly became Climax's most popular model and remained so throughout the company's history. Initially, the Class B was offered in sizes from 17 to 35 tons. However, as demand for larger locomotives grew, Climax increased the size of the Class B offerings until they topped off at 62 tons. In 1897, Climax built its first locomotive with three trucks. It was designated Class C. The three-truck design kept the axle loading down for use on light rail. The additional truck allowed longer distances between water stops and the additional weight provided greater tractive effort and a more stable engine. Due to their unique construction and features, Climax locomotives could go around sharp curves and climb steep grades. Pound for pound, they could outwork any other geared locomotive design in their weight class. They were ideally suited for rough track laid over rugged terrain. Climaxes were built in narrow gauge to broad gauge, from 2 foot to 9 foot gauge and seemingly every odd track width in between. The Climax was very popular in the logging regions of the United States and Canada. Many others were exported to foreign countries such as Australia, New Zealand, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico and throughout South America. Besides logging, Climax locomotives operated in a variety of other environments, such as open pit mining, industrial switching, stone quarries, brickyards, wood chemical plants, and sugarcane plantations. Some even served in passenger service on common carrier railroads. They were versatile machines that were easy to operate and maintain. In the 1920s, the demand for new geared logging locomotives shrank dramatically. As the Climax Manufacturing Company's owners were advanced in years, they decided in September of 1928 to sell the operation to the General Parts Corporation, later a division of the Vulcan Locomotive Company of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. From 1888 to 1928, Climax built between 1,000 and 1,100 locomotives. Because of poor record keeping and the fact that many records were destroyed and or lost, no one will ever know the exact number. The prototype for Bachmann's Climax model is Pardee and Curtain No. 6. This locomotive was a 25-ton Class B narrow-gauge Climax. She was a fairly modern engine by Climax standards, having a wagon-top boiler and steel cab. The Pardee and Curtain Lumber Company started logging operations early in the 20th century near its sawmill at Curtin in Nicholas County, West Virginia. In 1928, the entire operation was moved to Burgoo in Webster County. A Climax, a Heisler, and several Shays operated over a 100-mile network of track. This included the West Virginia Midlands dual-gauge mainline between Burgoo and Webster Springs, as well as dozens of narrow-gauge branch lines. Logging railroads, utilizing a combination of home-brewed parts and backwoods ingenuity, frequently modified their locomotives to imitate factory design improvements. Bachmann's Spectrum Climax represents one of many possible prototypes.